Hey everybody, Matthew Sambanis here. I'm a certified public accountant. My firm is based in Long Island, New York. And in today's video, we are going to discuss breaking news, in particular two federal judges blocking parts of the SAVE plan that Joe Biden came out with to cancel student loan debt. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Federal judges in Missouri and Kansas issued separate rulings on June 24th, blocking key sections of the Biden administration's savings on valuable education program, which is designed to lower, pro, uh, lower student loan payments and forgive debts. Um, it's important to point out that both of these judges were actually appointed by President Barack Obama at the time. And... Judge Crabtree, uh, who, as I just you know noted, was appointed by Barack Obama, declined to block the program in its entirety because he expressed concerns about the practicality of reversing parts of the plan that had already been implemented. Shame on him. He also said that Republicans delaying filing their lawsuits undermined their arguments that there was an immediate need to halt the entire program, which, yes, shame on them as well. Uh, in you know, by the way, if you're into economics, finance, making money, other things of that nature, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. That's what this channel is dedicated to. I've done quite a few videos on student loans as well, and that's why I'm covering this today. Anyway, and then in a separate decision on the same day, U.S. Judge John Ross from the Eastern District of Missouri also appointed by Obama, blocked the department from forgiving any further loans under SAVE until he decides the full case. His order said that such actions would likely strip state loan operators of revenue. Well, yeah, think about it. You originate a loan, you loan somebody money, and now all of a sudden you're not getting paid back. I mean, that's criminal. Or you are getting paid back, but the person who was supposed to pay you back isn't paying you back. It's the person's neighbor. <laughs> or you. Uh, if you're hardworking and pay taxes, or your neighbor, or me for that matter, right? So why should uh, Peter pay for Paul, or why should Paul pay for Peter? Um, anyway, Kansas Attorney General Chris Kobach, who spearheaded one of the legal challenges, issued a statement celebrating the ruling as a victory. As the court correctly held, whether to forgive billions of dollars of student debt is a major question that only Congress can answer. No, it's not, because if it is, then why doesn't Congress forgive mortgage debt? Why doesn't it forgive uh, credit card debt? Why doesn't it forgive medical debt? Why is it only student loan debt that's actually being forgiven? Other than the fact that the government's involved in it, and because of the government's involvement in student loans, that's the, price, the reason prices are so astronomically high to go to college, because the government guarantees the loans, and therefore... Um, Colleges can charge whatever they want because they know that whatever they charge, the student will be granted. Anyway, he goes on to say, this is not only unconstitutional, it's unfair. Blue-collar Kansas workers who didn't go to college shouldn't have to pay off student loans of New Yorkers with gender study degrees. <laughs> uh, I'm a New Yorker. I'm in Long Island, uh, or as you might have heard, Long Island, and... Uh, why should I have to pay off somebody's degree with a, a gender study degree? And not only that, why did I pay off my student loans early? Uh, and, you know, why, why don't I get anything out of this deal? And, you know, this begs a question. What is the hangup with forgiving all these student loans, right? Uh, Joe Biden has apparently made 12 executive actions to forgive billions of dollars, hundreds of billions of dollars of student loans. Why? For the votes? I mean, listen, not to get into politics, but the economy is absolutely dog due. So that's great that you got somebody's debt forgiven, but I don't think they're really going to be that dumb to see that they can't get a job, they can't make any money, they, they're stuck with this terrible college degree. And all right, fine, you forgave it, but if they want economic opportunities, they're going to probably vote somewhere else because you've done a terrible job, and you know it, and I know it, and everyday Americans know it. And not only that, uh, inflation is up God th knows how much through the roof. If we go off the fake numbers, they're still astronomically high. And if we go off the real numbers, not the government-concocted numbers, but the real numbers, they're probably four, five, six times as high as they say they are. Anyway, uh, Missouri Attorney General Andrew Bailey hailed the rule and calling it a huge win for the rule of law and Americans who would have been forced to pay off someone else's debt. <laughs> yeah, common sense, right? 
So what is the save plan? Uh, and, you know, by the way, if I'm wrong, you know, if I'm missing something, please leave a comment below. Um, you know, it's important to hear both sides of the story. And if you disagree with, um, with what I'm saying, we can still be friends. We can agree to disagree. And, you know, you point out something to me that I'm missing, I'll happily admit it. I'll happily admit that I'm wrong. And, uh, you know, be a big adult about it. So anyway, the save plan, a reworking of a previous plan, <laughs> and the reworking of the previous plan is from when the Supreme Court previously strike down, struck, struck down Joe Biden's illegal attempt at forgiving student loans originally. So then he went and said, how can I rework the law? And, you know, not for nothing. That's, and I don't think it's him. I don't think the guy knows what planet he's on, but that's a scumbag thing to do. You know, the Supreme Court says don't do something, leave it alone. Wow. Anyway, the SAVE plan is a reworking of a previous plan. It aims to have the required payment on student loans from 10% to 5% of discretionary income and shorten the repayment period for those with lower initial loan balances. This means that borrowers with smaller loan balances could have their loans forgiven in just 10 years instead of 20. So to me, that begs the question, why do you have to have a smaller loan balance to have it forgiven? You know, like, what if you have a big loan balance? Why can't you have that forgiven? Um, and, you know, maybe I'm missing something. It sounds like I'm missing something here. But anyway, moving along. Some parts of the plan have already been implemented, resulting in the forgiveness of loan of balance of hundreds of thousands of individuals, which is wrong. It's inflationary. It's a moral hazard. It results in a higher cost of college, and it's unfair to people like me who paid off their student loans, and now I have to pay off yours. Anyway, President Biden created the SAVE program after the Supreme Court rejected his plan to forgive broader debts. Following that decision, the Education Department pursued another way to provide debt relief under the Higher Education Act. Um, it would fully eliminate accrued interest for 23 million borrowers, cancel the amount of debt for over 4 million borrowers and give 10 million borrowers around $5,000 in debt relief or more. This goes back to why. I, I guess, obviously, for the votes, right? Unless I'm missing something. When you enter into a contract, you should fulfill that contract, right? That's your obligation. You go take out a loan for a car, you don't pay it back, um, it gets repossessed, Anyway, 25 million borrowers owe more than the amount they originally borrowed due to accruing interest. No duh, right? You, you take out a loan, you buy, I lend somebody money, it accrues interest, whether it's at the bank, whether it's a U.S. bond, whether it's a savings bond, whether it's an education bond, uh, mortgage loan, whatever, you take out a loan, it's going to accrue interest. So like, why is this really, really simple stuff that, you know, mind-blowing, I guess. <clears throat> anyway, long story short is what's the solution here, right? The solution is people, in my opinion, should be able to declare bankruptcy after 10 years or something. You know, if you have student loans and you, you still can't get rid of them, you're not making a degree, you were dumb enough to go to school for, I'm not even going to mention any of the degrees because I don't want to offend anybody. And frankly, if I did offend somebody, I really wouldn't care, but it's just not worth it. So anyway, you go, you get a worthless degree. All right, fine. That's your fault. And, you know, the college was dumb enough to, you know, again, loan you the money. But this is kind of what it goes back to. If the government is going to guarantee your loan, the college is going to loan you the money. Think about it. If the college had to say, is this person actually going to pay me back with a law degree, they'll probably loan you the money. Right? Is this person going to pay me back with a, a study in gender neutrality or whatever degrees are out there that I don't really even know? Uh, or, you know, the arts or shaping flowers or whatever? Probably not. Then they're not going to loan you the money. So, yes, you know, everybody should have the opportunity to go, go to college. Uh, but on the flip side, if you really want to go, you know, perhaps these different programs, uh, you know, different degrees are priced differently, right? A law degree is priced at $20,000 a semester because you know that that person going to law school is probably going to pay you back uh, versus a gender neutral degree. Uh, I don't know. That should probably be a thousand bucks for a semester, maybe 2000. <laughs> so you can work your way through school 
and uh, pay it off as you go, and then you can graduate debt-free, and you can have a worthless degree. Uh, what else is there? The government needs. The bottom line is that the government the government needs to get out of the college business, right? That's how we're going to lower college prices. That's how everybody can hopefully get back to being able to afford it. Going to you know, going working while you're in summer during the summer, and then going to college the rest of the year, or, or working part time. But at least you know, thirty, forty, fifty years ago, you could do that and pay it off and not have any college debt. And now you have college debt. You have senior citizens. You have retired people with college debt. It's absolutely crazy. Anyway, I hope you found this informative and helpful, and I apologize, kind of, if I rub your shoulders the wrong way or whatever the case may be. I do hope you have a great day, and again, please leave a comment below. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe.